released in tandem with Peter Jackson's latest blockbuster, Ubisoft's King Kong game is looking like a heap of fun. We managed to gain access to the producer, Emmanuel Kersale, for a personal demonstration. So how many levels are we talking about in this game, Emmanuel? Uh, the, well, the whole game is uh, actually pretty long. It just follows really, really close with the, the story of the game. I cannot tell you how many levels there will be, but it will be about maybe 10 to 15. And it's really Beautiful. And can you power your monkey up? Does he get stronger and learn new moves? Actually, it doesn't learn new moves, means like so powerful, just uh, but you got two gameplays, in one part you can play as a human, and then you can play as the ape, and it's, it's really like two real different experiences from, uh, from the game. So this is the part we're trying to save Anne, it's going around and finding some more. And this time we got two T-Rexes, so you got to be careful. And the, the motion of our big monkey here, he looks very monkey-like. Did you? Is this based on uh, watching monkeys prance about and hit this, things? Or? Yes, this has been based on like watching the monkeys and working a lot with Peter Jackson himself, trying to really recreate what he had in mind when he, he designed the, uh, the movie. And where did you get a monkey that big? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> Okay, this is the second finishing move, which is also really cool. Throw him away. Because you're a Kong. You're big, you're strong. Okay, so this is the part we play as Jack. So this is, you actually, uh, it's a uh, first person view, so actually see through the eyes of, uh, of the character. So you got the two friends, which, okay, here they are. And as you can see, this is the face of Jack Black. It looks really realistic. I got haze. And so what's happening here is that your friends are telling you that the monster is coming. And uh-oh, there he is. And so in this part, well, you get a gun, basically, but you're a human, you're weak. And this is a big, big monster, so. What you gotta do is get away, and while your friends are trying to open the door, this door, you gotta keep the monster busy. And so, when can uh, when can people expect to be playing Peter Jackson's King Kong? Uh, in Japan, it will be at the same time as the movie, before December. And a U.S. release date? A uh, U.S. release uh, should be somewhere in November. Fantastic! Thanks very much for that, Emmanuel. It looks fan looks great. When it comes to computer game merchandising, you cannot beat Japan. Here at TGS, they're going wild for that stuff. I've seen queues going around the block. So let's go and see what all the hype's about. I'm here with Toyama-san, the director of Forbidden Sirens 2. Um, we're about to have a chat to him and a look at the game and see just how it's coming along. Toyama-san, can you tell me a little bit about the trailer that we're about to see? The story basically takes place on an island called Yamishima, where 29 years ago there was a blackout and all of the people on the island disappeared shortly after the blackout and it, the island was basically abandoned. The story starts in the present where several different people with different motivations, different reasons, go to the island. And once they get there, a siren goes off, and these people find themselves 
in a completely different world where there are uh, different kinds of characters, uh, dead people, zombies, etc., that they need to deal with. And that's where the story really starts. One of the key aspects of the Siren series is the multi-character aspect and the multi-story aspect of it. So there are different characters and different, each of them have their own stories. Uh, this time we've expanded the characters somewhat. So there's even a member of the self-defense force, for example, who's a strong kind of a military character. But there's also a little boy character as well that comes out in the story. Certainly by improving a lot of these, some of the action aspects of the, from the previous version, uh, we've made the game a lot more interesting, a lot more scary for the users. But really the emphasis this time is on light and dark and the difference between what happens in the light and what you can't see happening in the dark. And the fact that you can't always see what's going on um, is a key aspect to creating a sense of horror. The other thing is that we really created a beautiful sense of light and spotlight and dark and shadow that gives a unique atmosphere. Certainly, in terms of creating the light and the dark and those, those kinds of effects and visuals, it's not so much that we're at the limit of the hardware that's available now, but rather that we looked at the PS2 platform and decided to take it as far as we could go intentionally. And so that's really what we've done with the, with the visuals this time, is really pushed it as far as we thought we could go. Mm. For Japan, the game is going to be available in February. For other world markets, we're not ready with a release date just yet. Nintendo celebrated Mario's 20th birthday with the launch of a limited edition Famicom version of the Game Boy Micro. The Nintendo DS has enjoyed strong sales driven by popular new software titles such as Nintendogs and the soon to be released Mario Kart DS. Nintendo's president, Satoru Iwata, provided fans with an exciting sneak peek of the innovative new control system for the Revolution console. We started by disregarding the conventional wisdom that the game controller must be held by both hands. Please take a look at this video.
With the Xbox 360 launch only months away, Microsoft were eager to show attendees exactly why they should be excited about the new machine. Helping drive the message home were demonstrations of Epic Software's futuristic shooter Gears of War and Q Entertainment's action title 99 Nights. Here's a sneak peek of some of the games you can look forward to on Xbox 360.
we were also able to get access to an exclusive interview with the lead designer of one of the hottest games at the show. We're here with Cliffy B from Epic Games. We're going to be talking a little bit about Gears of War, but you don't want to hear from me at the moment. Here's the man. How's it going, man? Gears of War is a third-person action game that combines the best elements of squad-based tactical, tactical action with the elements that I like from action horror games. I love like the slow pace of those tactical action games. I like the order systems. I like the squad-based elements. But I don't like the fact that they take place in like Baghdad or Mogadishu or those kinds of places, right? I also like horror games. I like uh, like Fatal Frame and whatnot. But I don't like the weak protagonists or the obtuse puzzles that are in those games. If you could combine those two elements in a cool entertainment experience, that would be what Gears of War is. Awesome. Um, can you tell me what we're seeing, what the level we're seeing right at the moment? What can you tell me about that? Well, my buddy here, Mark Rain, he's the uh, VP at Epic. He's Canadian, don't hold it against him. We got our homeboy, Marcus. He's the main character in the game, right? He's got his crew in Delta Company. They're trapped after dark. The enemies are the Locust Horde. They're from the underground of the planet. Since it's gotten darker, the Locusts are really, really good at night, and they've unleashed these krill, which are like these kind of air piranhas that will eat Marcus if he steps outside of the light. And now he's going to try and find a way out with his hide intact. Awesome. Now, a lot of people, I guess, are thinking about Unreal in relation to this game, given the success of it. What sort of similarities and what sort of major differences can you tell us about? Well, I think it's possible to draw some similarities with Unreal because this is a sci-fi game, Unreal is a sci-fi game. But if you look at how Gears is shaping up, the over-the-shoulder cam, the uh, focus on uh, the character animations and interactions with the environment, the uh, squad-based elements as well, and it's a lot darker than Unreal. Unreal has a lot of bright, kind of happy colors and a lot of the uh, gory, over-the-top violence. Gears is a lot more intimate, a lot more uh, dark, and a lot more visceral. Awesome. Now, I noticed in a demo we saw a bit earlier, he was popping off shotgun shots right across his shoulder and stuff like that. First of all, sweet. Second of all, does it get a little bit harder to aim and stuff like that when you're doing that stuff? Yeah, you're aiming as crap when you generally do that, but you look really, really cool. You wouldn't really do it in real life. It's one of those things like guns akimbo, right? Nobody actually carries two guns. Nobody actually like shoots a gun sideways gangster style, but it looks cool in the movies and it looks cool in games. Well, thanks a lot for your time, man. The game looks awesome. Can't wait to see it. Appreciate it.